Let's take a look again at why Indian women were used to promote Caribbean holidays in the 19th century. This is a remake of my original video which many of you told me was misleading. Thank you for your comments, I've taken this on board and I'm hoping this video will be more accurate. And please read this amazing article by Hena Sharma who inspired this video. Between 1834 and 1917, over 1 million Indians were taken from India to British colonies including Guyana, Fiji, Mauritius, Trinidad, Suriname and Jamaica. They were taken as indentured labourers from all over India and many were taken from Calcutta and Madras. Though there were some Indians who moved to the Caribbean with these contracts willingly, many were forced or tricked by recruiters. The following clip from this creator shows a woman talking about her experience. These indentured labourers' contracts came about because slavery had been abolished under the Emancipation Act of 1834 in Britain, and so plantation owners needed labourers. These indentured labourers' contracts were classified as unfree labour, meaning the workers had no power or freedom over their work contracts. They experienced abuse and exploitation akin to what happened under slavery. These contracts stated that the worker would get accommodation, pay and food rations. But as unfree labourers, they had no right to any of these and were bound to their estate manager, meaning if they tried to escape or leave, they were often thrown in jail. The sick thing about the abolitionist movement was that many abolitionists cared not about emancipating enslaved people, but about making plantations more efficient. Dr. Rachel Sturman says, the intention was to provide planters with regular, assured and cheap labour force, similar to what they had had under slavery, thereby alleviating their need to rely upon or pay market price for the labour of their former slaves. Usually these contracts were for five years, after which they were granted passage back to India. But they were rarely allowed to go back and suicide was common because of the horrendous conditions and treatment, with Fiji having the highest suicide rate of all the British colonies. Many women were forcibly taken from India and subject to horrendous abuse once they reached the islands. Since there was a shortage of women compared to men, many were forced into sex work. Despite this, European photographers would depict them on postcards as happy and wealthy, wearing traditional Langa Chalis and wearing jumkas. The aim was to hide the exploitation of these workers and portray the indentured labourers as happy and content in their new life. The women on these postcards were referred to as coolie bells. Andiel Gossin's Cane Portraiture series reimagines these postcards in modern day. If you're interested in reading more about this topic, here are my sources.